We've got Ryan Brown, CEO of Northbud, uh, Northbud Capital and Northbud Farms, here on Spike. Uh, Skype. <laughs> <laughs> what I a day. Today. What a day it's been. Yeah. Hey, Ryan. Hey, guys. Hey, so I appreciate coming on short notice. We were we were talking about Tetra, and James had seen that they were up on the screen. Now we were interviewing Guy. He's like, "Why don't we get Ryan on?" And and here you are. So thank you. That was such short notice. Yeah, no, no problem at all, guys. Thanks a lot. Busy busy day for Northbud today as we, we list tomorrow on the CSC. So we're uh, anxiously uh, anxiously awaiting uh, our listing. Yeah, I was going to say uh, new listing. Uh, it's going to be listing under what's the acronym? It's going to be listing under. Uh, and bud and bud very nice and it's going to be on the csc and how long has this been in the making um about 10 months or so uh about 10 months ago um we uh, we made an agreement with uh, with tetra to uh, acquire the uh, their original acmpr application um that they no longer wanted to move forward obviously uh, focus on drug development uh, and so we thought that that was a a good project for us to get behind um, to build out their the ACMPR application in the facility uh, with a focus on hopefully providing them with some of the cannabis that they're going to need as they continue their obviously a very impressive pipeline of uh, of drugs. Smart, very nice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And when it comes to uh, facility and where you are with everything, I mean, this just came across uh, Corona's attention. We hadn't heard about it before. For the other investors who are wondering, you know, who is this company going public tomorrow? Do you guys, are you guys operating in Ontario? Do you have a large facility or, or what are the details of uh, what you have going on? So we, um, uh, our facility that we're in the process of constructing is about 45 minutes north of Ottawa. Uh, we're in a small town called Low Quebec. Um, on agricultural land, um, looking to leverage a lot of the low cost uh, infrastructure that's available in the province of Quebec. Um, you know, Four cents a kilowatt hour flat rate hydro. Um, we actually believe we're going to be one of the more environmentally friendly production facilities uh, located only two kilometers from one of the largest hydroelectric dams uh, in the province um, and uh, 95 acres of land. So ample uh, ample room to expand. Uh, although our, uh, our phase one facility is going to be about 25,000 square feet. Uh, as we obviously want to uh, perfect the uh, the highly regulatory, highly regulated pharmaceutical production uh, model that we're that we're implementing before we go and uh, blow our brains out and build uh, you know, build 150, 200, 500 thousand square feet of production. No, and that's smart too. Uh, you know, a lot of these companies are having these massive, massive facilities, and they've never grown more than like 20 plants before. So it's it's probably smarter. Uh, it's starting out small and, and going larger, but uh, this is going to be going on to the CSC like we said earlier. Is there a certain price that you're looking at? What was the IPO? So we, we completed our IPO financing round at 25 cents a share, uh, raised uh, approximately five and a half million dollars in various rounds, um, putting us at a post money value of uh, approximately 12.75 million um, with uh, on the back of raising five and a half million. So we think that that's a very fair and reasonable valuation for you know what amounts to be um, a startup, uh, obviously backed by management that has industry experience and supported by a board of directors that's quite sophisticated uh, for the size company we are. And so we look forward to, to executing and really building value in the market um, as opposed to uh, printing off a bunch of free stock and putting an arbitrary valuation on it and, uh, and throwing it out there to see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that actually is quite competitive, uh, 17 and a half or so. Um, any well, idea what you might be actually listing on, uh, listing for, or is that still up in the air? Uh, market will dictate, right? I mean, it's, yeah. uh, it's a twelve, <laughs> a $12.7 million valuation. Um, and so we're, you know, we're trading at slightly over two times cash on hand, uh, which I think uh, with the expansion potential, uh, obviously the phase of the application where, you know, it's an, uh, an existing application that we took over Petra, so we're at the confirmation of readiness stage. So we, uh, you know, all uh, all hands on deck to get the uh, the facility completed um, and hopefully licensed uh, as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a race. And, and you said you were sorry. You were uh, just beside Ottawa. Did you say you were in Quebec, though? Yeah, we're in Quebec. Yeah, just uh, about forty five minutes north of Ottawa on the Quebec side. That'd be very interesting. Not uh, there really aren't that many LPs out there. It'll be a a big competitive advantage to be able to, to lock that in. Yeah, why is that, Ryan? Do you do you have any uh, idea why we're, we're not seeing a lot of licensed producers out there? Um, I know one of the issues at the beginning that we actually dealt with this um, at the beginning stages of the application was that the um, 
some of the municipalities in the cities took a while before they implemented proper municipal bylaws, particularly for the guys that are growing um, indoor production facilities. Um, Quebec considers cannabis cultivation to be an agricultural activity. Um, so we, uh, you know, we weren't uh, subject to that kind of having to wait around for municipalities to give you the proper uh, approval to be able to start building indoor production facilities. Um, so that, um, I think that led to the, the little bit of a delay. Um, if you look at, you know, Hydropothecary, Hexo being the first licensed producer located on agricultural land, um, that gave them a significant, uh, you know, a significant head start and, you know, well thought out strategy by those guys. Um, and, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're following suit with uh, focus on agricultural production. And I think you're going to start to see more Quebec producers come online. Uh, you've got some joint ventures between Aurora, between Canopy, and some um, you know, retrofitted um, vegetable growers uh, in the province. And so I think Quebec will uh, might have got off to a bit of a slow start, but I think they will uh, will rapidly um, catch up. And there's certainly no uh, no denying that Quebec is uh, going to be a very uh, valuable cannabis market. Um, very liberal-minded province with uh, quite a high level of cannabis consumers, and so it'll be uh, it'll be a really good market going forward. Interesting. Interesting. And how much of the float is locked up when you go public here? Um, the majority of the floats locked up. Um, what we did with Tesher was that we, we issued uh, 15 million shares, uh, which represented approximately 30% of the company, to Tetra, which they then um, did an in-kind distribution to their shareholder base. Um, so we've obviously, uh, you know, we have uh, a, large, a large shareholder base for a company our size, um, which has given us you know, a, lot of, a lot of outreach and a lot of eyes on what we're doing. Uh, and it was also an excellent opportunity for Tetra to monetize an asset that really didn't fit in their business model moving forward. Um, so it's really a, a win-win for everybody. Nice. So it can really fly. Yeah. This thing can do well. Yeah, and it'll be really interesting. It's like you said, um, Quebec does not have many. Last time I checked, it's something like nine. I'm sure there's changes since then. I haven't looked specifically, but Quebec's our second largest province in uh, GDP per capita and everything. Getting in there. Ryan's got a lot of experience in Quebec. I've been following Ryan. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm a lifelong, a life, lifelong Quebecer, and you know, really excited to um, be the municipality that we're building our facility and is really going to benefit um, from the economic development that comes. And I think that's something that you know you, you hear Bruce Linton speak about what it's done, what Canopy's done for Smith Falls, and I think that's you know an under under discussed story in this industry about how you know we're able to take what amounted to be you know, vacant hay fields and turn them into you know state of the art cultivation facilities to provide jobs, uh, economic development, uh, as well as tap into a very uh, knowledgeable and skilled workforce. We've been very, uh, very impressed with the caliber of candidates that have uh, presented themselves looking for employment. Um, and we're really, really looking forward to leveraging those, uh, call that geographic advantage that we think we have. Yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. Now, you say you're about to, have you already spoken to uh, the governing body of uh, Quebec? I'm trying to think of the acronym right now. Because they've been all over the news, actually, with uh, Namaste and how Tilray and uh, supposedly Afria had canceled their contracts because of that. So clearly, SAQ, not S yeah, SAQ. Uh, the liquor board is it? I'm not sure. Yeah, so the, the SAC, which is a uh, cannabis off of the uh, SAQ liquor board, uh, certainly they're the ones regu regulating recreational cannabis in the province moving forward. Um, typically, um, Quebec was one of the last adopters of the uh, you know MMPR ACMPR program. Um, College of Physicians was really not supportive of physicians um, prescribing. Um, until you see companies like Tetra, you know, backed by pure science, really breaking down that barrier and getting a lot of the Quebec physicians on board, um, being able to prove um, that, uh, that, that cannabis does have a legitimate medic medicinal and medical value uh, moving forward. Um, so the, the government agency I was referring to was the actual Agriculture Board of Quebec um, that's really uh, pro-cannabis cultivation and is, uh, you know, has considered it an agricultural activity from, from day one. Mm. A little bit dissimilar than what you're seeing in BC, where you've got issues between the agriculture board and the, the producers. Um, they don't want people using agricultural land for cannabis production. Gotcha. Okay, and who's doing the uh, security for the facility? You got Hyde on board there, or? Oh yeah, sure. we we uh, we've had we've had David on uh, since day one. Obviously, the uh, best in the business, and we uh, feel very comfortable um, using David Hyde. Uh, cannabis uh, CCI as well uh, has been advising us. Uh, and so we, from an application point of view, we're, uh, you know, we're, every, everything's ready to go. Uh, we will likely be licensed under the Cannabis Act, so there may be some uh, modifications that we'll have to do uh, post-October 17th. Uh, but really, we're focused right now on, on construction. Uh, we've engaged a firm out of Drummondville, uh, a large industrial um, construction company, 
Uh, it's actually a, a neat note that uh, every part of our facility will be come from Quebec. All the steel is manufactured in Quebec, refined in Quebec, everything is built in Quebec um, by Quebec-based contractors. And so we feel really, uh, really comfortable. And we're actually able to uh, avoid some of the steel tariff issues that uh, that came up uh, during our prospectus process as we were waiting that out, uh, getting our ducks in a row to to begin construction. So uh, economically, I think uh, when the market sees what we've spent for the product that we're building, uh, I think that the the react very favorably. Yeah, and I, I like that you just mentioned that as well because that's important. Uh, depending on how many people know Quebec government, Quebec business, they keep things inside Quebec. They're very, very loyal to Quebecers. So hearing that it's built by Quebecers, there's a, they're, they're there along the entire process. I strongly believe that will bode well for you, as I'm sure you already know. Yeah, no, we, we, I know. Mean, we're working in a small municipality as well. I mean, our, our municipality has been phenomenal. Uh, I'm talking to some other you know, late stage applicants and some of the nightmares they've gone through uh, with building permits. I mean, our uh, building permit application process took about 35 minutes. Uh, it cost us a couple hundred dollars and, you know, we got the stamp and we were good to go. Uh, and so very, very, uh, very, very uh, different than what you're seeing uh, in Ontario and British Columbia, particularly um, with some of these companies having to navigate these stringent regulations uh, when really they just want to start building so they can, uh, you know, get their company online. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. Well, well, hey, you know, I just reading a comment in our FTMIG live room saying, Carl, this is so informative. Uh, one of our, our people watching this live, and it's exactly that. I appreciate you taking the time. You do go live uh, tomorrow on the CSC. If you can see the ticker one more time. I think they're going to so go well. And Bud, uh, yeah, we're trading on the CSC tomorrow. Perfect. Well, we we'll look forward to having you on the show again in the near future. Appreciate everything and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Later, Ryan. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Looking forward to coming back. Take care, dude.